Hey guys, it is me, Heidi. Welcome to another episode of Heidi's Lane. So I'm doing a couple things different today. Number one, you'll notice I don't have the traditional intro with music because I'm introducing what's coming next. Uh, Number two, I had decided to gather a lot of the questions that I was getting from you guys. I did one ask me anything and there were just hundreds if not thousands of questions and I gave the questions to a good friend of mine who has a beautiful podcast studio allowed me to use the studio and then he interviewed me he pulled the top asked questions asked me a bunch of questions that you guys have asked um, and then we made an episode out of it so I do want to give a little disclaimer this was a couple months back so some of the stuff in here might be a little outdated, but really not not by much at all. Uh, the lessons stand very true. I love that in this episode, we are going into things that um, are near and dear to many of you guys, burning questions that you have, uh, both about my life and also questions that you have for you specifically, things that you want to know to help guide you along your path. Um, So friends, please meet Tyler Hall and let's do this. All right, guys, I am super excited about our podcast episode today. This is Heidi's Lane. It doesn't look like Heidi's Lane, but we are in a really amazing studio that I have actually recorded in before um, and I'm happy to be back. So I'm here with my good friend Tyler Hall of Roller Coaster Podcast. Did I just say Roller Coaster? I think I, I like, did. I like Rolos. I, I love Rolos. Should we get some? We should. The caramel hurts my receipt line, so. Um, so what I'm doing here with Tyler today, if you guys remember from some past podcast episodes, I mentioned that we're going to be doing something different for summer. And I mentioned I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. And if you've been listening for a while now, or you've been a friend of mine in my community for a while now, you know that I build things as I go. I kind of let nature, I let the universe, I let God bring me what's supposed to be here. And I truly believe that this podcast, it's in full evolution evolution mode. It really is. And today we are going to be doing a Q&A. So we pulled hundreds of questions that you guys submitted. Um, and this is not going to be the only episode like this. But to make sure that you get your questions answered and you hear from me the topics that you really want to hear about, we went ahead and pulled these hundreds of questions. We are going to answer as many as we can today on the topic of family, because that is a most frequently asked topic. Um, And I figured there was nobody better to do the interview than Tyler, because he truly is the master of interviewing. This guy can get me to go deeper than anybody else that I've ever interviewed with. So Tyler, thank you for doing this. Thank you for jumping on board with this weird idea in your studio. (laughs) (laughs) All right. How are we going to do this? How is this happening? Well, first of all, let me say this. So I'm going through these questions. Yeah. Okay. I've done, I didn't ask me anything one time and I think like four people (laughs) responded and three were my mom and one was like Heston or or Heidi. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It it was uh, so I'm literally blown away at Mm. this idea that you can do an Ask Me Anything and hundreds of people will come in here and write questions. Like, I'm like, I I had to ask you, like, is this actually all from your fan, like your audience, your Mm. community? And you you said, yeah, and it's just amazing. So I appreciate that. Can I just speak to my audience real fast, to my friends listening? (laughs) I really do have the best. I'm not kidding you. And this Ask Me Anything is probably a fraction of what other ones were. This was a last minute thing. We didn't, it, they, you guys listening, you guys are just the greatest and it's really cool for you, Tyler, to get to see. They support, they are loyal. They've been with me through so many things, through a podcast filmed in my living room. <laughs> now to a studio. Look at us. We're moving up, Heston. You're growing up. Heidi. We're moving up. Heston's no, behind the camera, guys. It's, uh, yeah, it means a lot for me to to get to do this with you. I Thank obviously you. care deeply about you and we've developed a really yeah. great relationship. I would consider you a sister in I some ways, if that's appropriate to say. So. Well, not that you're a sister, but I do. <laughs> you're like a brother and I really yeah. appreciate you. I know I can call you with any issue and you'll help give me, you'll steer me right, making sure that my priorities are in line. So thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's a lot here. We're going to start out by talking about 
family and relationships. And I think one of the things that people have obviously watched and tracked is the mission call yeah. of your son Maddox. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think um, one of the questions that a community member asked is that faith is huge in your family and life and Maddox is going on a mission. Um, how do you feel about that, yeah. Heidi? And what is your current faith or denomination? Mm, this is a really good question. So I love that we're going here first because depending on when you guys are listening to this, Maddox probably is close to leaving. Um, I feel I am very, very proud of Maddox's choice to go on a mission. So I was raised Mormon um, for most of my life. And I think just, it, it's not just a Mormon thing. I think it's a religion thing. We're often brought up into religion and we don't really think to even question what we're taught when we're younger, right? Um, so I don't wanna say it's brainwashing because I don't think it was brainwashing. I think I just knew what I knew, right? So I was raised Mormon and um, actually remain, was married in the temple to my first husband. So Derek and I were actually married in the temple. I think to this day, he and I are still married in the temple because we've never done a temple divorce. So if I die, apparently. <laughs> Derek's your guy. <laughs> You're back. <laughs> Sorry, everybody else <laughs> that I might be with in the future. Um, no, but, but I was Mormon. I, I mean, here's the, the reality is I've never had my records removed. And to this day, so now I actually, I had had a period of time where I did not go to church. I actually do occasionally go to the Mormon church now. So let me just say, when I met Chris, um, I, actually before I met Chris, when I, I got a divorce and I was like, what do I even believe, right? Like I have gone 25 years of my life going to a church and speaking about things and, and ingraining things in my kids that I don't even know myself. So I actually did the Mormon missionary discussions before I met Chris. When I, when I had met Chris, we weren't yet really dating because I wanted to know what I believed, right? I wanted to hear what I actually believed because I don't think I ever stopped to think. And I think most people with religion don't say, hey, what do we actually believe? What do I actually believe? Okay, here's what's taught. How do I feel? What do I believe? And that was the first time I was like, okay, what's my relationship with God really like? And then Chris and I um, started the show. And I only knew church up to that point Sorry, this is going to be a long answer. I only knew church up to that point, sitting in a chapel and hearing from God through a prophet, right? Or someone speaking, whoever, the bishop or whoever it is. When Chris and I started doing extreme weight loss, this is real. I had more spiritual experiences going around to people's homes around the nation and helping them rid themselves of the 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 chains that have held them down for so long, helping them release the emotional weight that led to depression and helplessness. And I mean, those to me, like there's light and there's darkness. When someone is so hopeless and five or 600 pounds because of the emotional weight that they're carrying from child abuse or sexual molestation, whatever it is, there is so much darkness. And to be a part of something that helped free a soul was the most beautiful church. It was the most beautiful connection that I'd ever had with God in my life. And Chris and I would say it all the time. Our next door neighbor who was a part of what we would do with us, we would all say it. We would say, I, there's no spiritual edification that I've ever gotten that feels the way that helping somebody free themselves feels. So that then became, I don't know if I want to say religion, but that became, that took the place of religion in my life. Now, meanwhile, my spirituality grew, right? Like who I, who I know I am to God, like that became clearer and clearer mm -hmm. over time. So, and I believe that my relationship with God is independent of what any religion says. So it doesn't matter if I'm Mormon, if I'm Buddhist, if I'm any kind of Christianity, Catholic, it doesn't, doesn't matter to me. I think my relationship with God depends on my contract with God, right? Now, most religions are saying the same thing and they're trying to help us live a life on the straight and narrow. I think religion, most of the time, is to help people live a life that helps them feel good about who they are and return to God, depending on what the religion believes. 
I feel like heaven and hell for me is on this earth. I feel like when I live aligned with my contract with God, right? And I get to determine what my contract with God is. When I'm aligned with that, it might include drinking. It might not include drinking. Whatever I say, it's integrity, right? Whatever I say I'm going to do. If I do it, my relationship with myself and my God is ironclad. But when I say something, I'm not going to drink. And then I drink, I'm out of integrity. My relationship with myself and my God is then broken, right? And then there's some repairing to do. So that's how I view spirituality right now in my life. Now, I, I say that my kids know very well where I stand. My kids also know I see so much value in the upbringing that I had, which was in the Mormon church. Yeah. I love the family values. I love, um, there's a lot of things that I love. I love the missionary training program. Like I love the missionary program. My brothers all went on missions. Mo many people who are successful that I know went on missions. And so about a year ago after Dave passed, actually, um, it actually, it was right before Dave passed. I was kind of on my own spiritual journey. And I was saying, do I want to go to a Christian church? Do I want to go to the Mormon church? Let me poke holes in all of them. I knew I wanted something for my family because those 10, 12 years that since I met Chris, we had no religious structure. Not that you need religious structure, but I wanted it for my kids. I wanted family togetherness. I wanted the values that I had from someone other than me, right? And so we went to all different churches. And I ended up going to, I was at a Mormon church the day I knew Dave died. And I say knew Dave died because I knew and I, because of a conversation I had with him the night before, and I had someone go find him because I just had a feeling. So there was something for me in that, that was like, a, I don't know if this is a sign or this is coincidence, but I feel like my family needs this church. I don't know what it is. And so we would go and Cash and Ruby wanted to get baptized. They all did the missionary discussion questions, whatever it is, and missionary discussions, I guess mm -hmm. is what it is. And Maddox, who I'm gonna be honest, was um, a kid that I really worried about, like the most. And like he had some really rough times um, when I, my 39th birthday was a very tough day. I'm not gonna go into details, but he, maybe, you know, we all have friend groups sometimes that aren't great. And I think maybe there was a time when he didn't know who his friends were and found friendship in places that weren't great. And as a parent, it is, anyone listening, you know, it is one of the hardest things to see. And it's not because you don't have the most amazing kids. It's because as humans, we want to fit in. And sometimes to fit in, we make decisions that we're not proud of. Right. And so Maddox has always been the one that I worried. And he's my oldest. So, of course, I'm going to worry. He's the first one to encounter all of these things. My other ones just aren't there yet. And I was very he was struggling in school. Most of his life, he struggled in school. And to see this like a, a year ago, he came home. He was going to baptize Cash and Ruby. He came home from the um bishops meeting or whatever and to be ordained to be able to baptize cash and ruby and he said mom i'm gonna go on a mission and there was like for me not knowing what life after high school was going to look like for maddox not knowing if he was going to graduate to be honest because up to that point he struggled to pass every grade he was still taking summer school credit after summer, summer school credit just to be able to move on to the next grade so for him to come home last june may or june and say i'm gonna go on a mission was literally, I mean, like I had to hold back tears because I knew if he saw tears, he'd be like, oh crap, wait, hold on. Am I make like, <laughs> I don't want mom to get too excited about this. But it was actually the best moment of my life because I knew with the Mormons missionary training program, missionary program, Maddox would have a really great opportunity at growing as an adult outside of my home. He now has, so... He also created a magnet for himself. So before his senior year, which is when this was, there was no magnet. There was no goal in Maddox's life. And anytime anyone, if you lack a goal, Tyler, if I lack a goal, if Maddox lacks a goal, we all lack a magnet. Like that, that goal acts as a magnet for us to 
grow in life and to take steps toward something. Without a goal, we're kind of just all over the place and we're loose and we're flowy and uh, sad and depressed and lost, right? So Maddox now had a magnet. That goal was a magnet that had him making decisions that were good for his physical body. He didn't take substances in his body. He was very careful. He worked out more. I never had to ask him. He would wake up and work out. He treated his siblings and me better than he ever had because there was something he was working to achieve. Like, okay, now my identity is that I'm going to be a missionary. I'm going to be someone who leaves my home for two years, Mm -hmm. lives with a companion, and serves God. Like what an awesome magnet. So in that moment, a year ago, it was like he became that 20-year-old, 19 and a half-year-old that was going to go live with a companion, serve God, and learn to live on his own, right? And the growth I've seen in Maddox over the last year has been super impressive. So I'm going to tie all this around. What do I think about Maddox going on a Mormon mission? When I go, I go half the time to the Mormon church. I go the other half the time to CCV. I love this Christian church. It's awesome because I personally get so much out of that church. My family gets a lot out of the Mormon church. Who says I can't go to two churches? Like I can go to however many I want. So can you and so can anybody listening. It's the great thing. We get to do what we want in life. But there are things in any religion that I don't agree with. There are things that I was raised believing in the Mormon church that I don't agree with, right? But to me, I'm not going to throw the baby out with bathwater. Like there are so many beautiful things about having my family take part in the Mormon religion and culture. I am more than okay saying these things that I don't like about it, I'm just going to be okay that it exists and I'm going to focus on all of the things that I do love about it, right? It's like our spouses. You, you, how long have you been married, Tyler? 12 years. 12 years. Do you like everything about your wife? Does she like every, let me ask it the other way. Does she like everything about you? (laughs) No and no. (laughs) Okay. Okay. But just because there are things that you guys do not see eye to eye on, you don't believe in together. You don't like about each other. Doesn't mean that that's not a marriage that's worth having. So same. I love what the more I, I, I believe in a lot of the things that they teach a lot, a lot. Christianity, I think, is beautiful and awesome. And the spirituality and the connection with God and especially how they've started to evolve over the last handful of years as the world has evolved. Yeah. I think it's necessary. And Maddox is going to come home a drastically different person than when he left. Amen. That was a long, long answer to a question. You're supposed to say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs> I'd like to bear my testimony. Yeah. I know this church is true. <laughs> I love my mom and dad. That's a great Isn't that the Mormon same? joke. It, I love anyone it. listening who is I love it. knows. And listen, <laughs> let me just say about the Mormons. I'm technically a Mormon, so let's just say that. About ourselves. So, yeah, yeah. There are so many wonderful humans. There are people who struggle in any religion. So I'm sure someone listening is like, oh, but I knew that one guy who was Mormon who did this to me. We're all human, right? It doesn't matter if you're Catholic, if if you're Buddhist, if you're non-denominational. We're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. Some people make more mistakes than others. There are so many solid, kind, generous, family-oriented, deeply rooted humans in my Mormon community. I don't know about yours. Yeah. It's hard not to want to be around them. They're like Mm -hmm. light, you know? Mm -hmm. They're shiny. Couldn't agree more. This turned into a religion podcast. Well, (laughs) listen, I think out of the family and relationships category, there were dozens of questions about where you stand with your faith and do you still participate in the LDS church and how do you feel about Maddox going on a mission? And so this was like very repetitive and I thought that's why we okay. should cover it okay. for sure. Okay, this one's a little lighter and I think okay. I think okay. fun, okay? So somebody somebody asked the question, one of our community members, what's your favorite quality of each a- one of your children? About Tyler Hall. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure, we let's start there. What's your favorite quality about Ooh. each one of your children? This is a really good question. Okay. So I I feel like I need to end with Ruby. <laughs> yeah. Because she's, she's your favorite. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have favorites. But let me just let's talk Ruby's to that for a sec. Well, she's not my favorite. 
<laughs> but what she is is she's my final. Do you have a favorite, Tyler? <laughs> <You're> gonna... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, here's what it is. I feel like every child I learned more that helped me appreciate the next one deeper. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was with my parents, I think. I think my parents learned on oh, yeah. Gmo and me. Yeah. Denver is by far the favorite. Yeah. They actually met Denver on the podcast a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But um, so let's see. So Maddox, what's my favorite quality in each of them? Maddox is 19 and a half years old. And he didn't see me for three weeks a couple weeks ago. Well, I guess it was just a few days ago. He came home. He was in Hawaii for 10 days because he's a big boy now going on trips. Then he went to his dad's house after. And I was, when he walked through the door, I was sitting on the couch with Marley. I don't remember what Marley and I were doing. We were just kind of like laying on each other, laughing at something on our phones. And Maddox came in. He's this six foot, two and a half inch man and just lays on top of me and nuzzles his head like into my neck and I haven't seen you in three weeks. Tyler, that's how Maddox is. Always has been. He, is, the last year it's been a little bit less because it's like he's finding his independence. Yeah. Um, but he is just the cuddliest mama's boy. And I don't even feel bad saying this on here because if there's a girl listening, every girl wants a mama's boy because it means that they're going to treat their wife well. Maddox will he, – he, there's so many great qualities about him. He does not talk crap about anyone. You'll never hear him. No matter how someone has harmed him or hurt him, mm. he will find the good in that person and he will remain silent when everyone else is saying something mean. He's such a kind-hearted, great friend. Um, he's very conscientious of what I need. And what I, he, he's, he's, he's very heartfelt, right? Um, and I'm also going to say over the last year of Maddox just killing it in life, like getting, he got A's and B's this year, went from F's to A's and B's. And it's really an awesome thing. He has found, he's realized that he can do anything. That kid, I'm not worried about him in life at all. If he completes this, whether he completes the mission or not, but completing something he starts, which this mission is going to be something he starts, I hope he completes it just to complete yeah. what he started, right? Yeah. Um, I do not think that there's anything that he will not kill it at in life. He's a hustler and he has such huge levels of integrity. So that's my favorite quality about Maddox. Uh, Marley. Marley is... She's a teenager right now. She's a teenager and she is about the, like her natural self is probably the sweetest, kindest, most thoughtful person you could find. She really is. Um, and it's been awesome with her because over the past couple of years, I think specifically after Dave passed, she and I started really connecting more. I think there was just more. She um, She's a woman and a woman is a nurturer and she's very concerned with how my feelings are and how she can help. And also it's been really awesome because um, I've seen like her fun, a little bit wilder side come out, like her funny side. And I, she's actually a catch. So I don't know if any guy is ever going to be good enough for Marley in my book. So... That's my, my favorite. Marley, she's just very well-rounded. She's very responsible. Hold on, I have to cough. Edit. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. All right. <clears throat> she's very well-rounded. She's very responsible. And just overall, a great human. That's Mars. Mm. Cash. There's a lot of things I love about cash. I'm what I'm going to say because I guess the question technically was, "What's your favorite yeah, quality?" You're not answering this very well. <laughs> all the qualities. <laughs> What's your favorite? All of them. All seventeen See, that all of my hard. kids have. <laughs> it's just so hard with your kids. Yeah. Um. So cash. If I have to say my favorite quality, let me just. 
I'm going to preface the favorite quality with Cash is good at everything he does, okay? It's just ridiculous. I don't understand how. Um, if I had to give my favorite quality, his depth. I do not understand how a 13-year-old can see the world more vastly and deeply than I can at 42. And I consider myself a relatively deep person. Cash, his depth is, it's insane. Um, and just to, the way that his brain works and connects the dots and contemplates life and meaning at such a young age, it's, it's beautiful and it's scary because it's a lot for his little brain to uh, think about, right? But he, he, he is a, he's a good kid. He's very deep and very generous. Did I do good keeping that one short? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Still counted seven things. Okay, now Ruby, how are we going to do on rooms? <laughs> I feel like I don't even need to explain how I feel about Ruby because she's all over my social media. And I mean, not all over, but I talk about her quite a bit. Ruby's the baby. And let me just say, Rubes, and I need to be careful with this. She's the most like me of any kid. And so I think, isn't it interesting how as parents we like, we're like, oh, our kid is just like us. I love that. That's a little bit narcissistic if mm -hmm. you ask me, mm -hmm. but it's just real. We like yeah. that they look like us. We like that they talk like us. We like that they want to be like us. And then there's something so worrisome in that because she gets feedback from a lot of people, a lot of people. You are just like your mom. And there's a worry in that that, she'll feel like she needs to be me to be enough. And I've never met a kid, I have not, I've never met a kid who is more respectful and appreciative and emotionally in tune than Ruby. Never. I've, I've, I don't know if I've met an adult who's more respectful, appreciative, emotionally in tune. It's the wildest thing. <clears throat> And some, I, I, I also have to be careful with her. With all my kids, I try and be careful and not say, oh, I'm proud of you because you're respectful. I'm proud. I guess we've talked about this. I'm proud of you because of X, Y, Z, because yeah. I don't want them to think they have to be something mm -hmm. for me to be proud. Um, yeah. yeah. Rubes is, did I play Ruby down enough? Let's that was see. Yeah, amazing. she's okay. <laughs> was so she is on the same level as your other three. Now that we can yeah, establish, yeah, exactly. You heard it right there. <laughs> there's a there's a common theme too around divorce. Okay, so I think this is going to be a two part question where I'm going to put okay. two of these together. You're so good at this, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, you are. I know. I know. Thank you, and I know. <laughs> so it's uh, so so this question is: How did you know you were doing the quote unquote mm. right thing by getting divorced? I'm struggling with this currently. Four kids. I feel like I'm breaking up the family. I love your insight, please. And the other one is to go hand in hand is getting a divorce after 40 years. How do I find the courage to trust somebody again? Ooh, those are so good. I just had a thought. How cool would it be, Tyler, if I did like, if we figured out a way to do like live coaching where someone can come on, a woman is, she's asking me this question. Sorry, guys, you're like hearing me build this podcast in real life. Wouldn't it be cool? And I can like coach her through on my podcast. Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. I know. Cause I can, like, I hear these questions and my first thought is, I wish I could see the woman and look her in the eyes and answer these questions, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. So first, to, and I get the question quite a bit. Hold on. Actually, let me take a drink and we'll be right back. Okay. Um, I do get the question quite a bit. Uh, people asking, how do I know if I should leave my marriage? I know, Heidi, you've been divorced twice. Which to me, truly, the twice divorce thing, I don't feel like I have, right? I feel like I've lived a totally normal life. But when I look at it from an outside perspective and I'm like, wait, that girl's been divorced twice? That's me, right? Like I've been divorced two times, which is a lot. And I have to try not to have that be my identity. Um, to someone who's like, hey, um, 
how do you know, how, how did you know when it was time to leave a marriage? How should I know when it's time to leave a marriage? I think a lot of people come to me um, believing that I'll say, yes, leave your marriage, right? Like, oh, Heidi, you left a marriage? And then just to clarify for the viewers or listeners, I did leave my first marriage. I did leave my first marriage. And <clears throat> my second marriage kind of fell apart. It was both of us, I would say. Um, it, yeah, that's too much to go into today. But the first marriage I did choose to leave and it was not an easy decision. And I also think, and, and I'm going to say, I truly believe he and I are exactly where we're supposed to be. My first husband and I are, I do not believe we were meant to be married. I do believe that we were meant to come together to have those kids who are amazing. I love Maddox and Marley. He loves Maddox and Marley. Now, to people looking for, to me to say, yes, you should leave your marriage, I am going to be the first to say, okay, I did it once, and I think it actually worked out well for Derek and I to not be together. Chris and I had, and I don't really talk about this very often at all, we had a 10-year marriage. We had two years before, and we've had five years since. So that's 17 years I have with him, but we had 12 years together. We had so many memories. We had a wonderful time with the kids. So many, and, and there's, there were so, he and I actually got along really well inside of our marriage. And also inside of marriage, there's a lot of pain. If he and I, I mean, this is gonna be like juicy for my listeners. If he and I could have worked through those issues, hands down, without a shadow of a doubt, I would have, I would today, I would keep that family together because it's like we talked about at the beginning of this. It's like there are things that you do not like about your wife and she doesn't like about you, you know? And, but at the end of the day, breaking a family up is really difficult. It's super hard. And I, you know, have been around the block, block enough now because <laughs> I haven't just dated Derek, Chris, and Dave, and this new guy. There haven't just been four. I've dated in between as well. And you're not going to find the grass any greener on any other side. That's what I'm going to say. Like the grass is greener where you water it. And it's really what I've realized today is it is a matter of who you choose to commit to and you choose to water grass with. And it's not going to be perfect. My guy and I now, it's not perfect. We have really hard times. And I actually had to have a come to Jesus with myself recently that was like, okay, am I going to commit to this or am I going to step out? Because I can pick apart someone and a relationship all day, every day. I've done it. Clearly, I've been in and out of marriages. The marriages that I think are the most solid are the ones who say, okay, we all have our shit. Are we committed? Do we have the same goal together? And are we committed to making this work, right? And when you do that and you lock arms and say, we are in this till death do we part, we are going to freaking make this work come hell or high water. Doesn't mean there's not going to be struggle. There is. But at the end of the day, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine the peace I would have in my life if I had been able to make a relationship work. And I haven't been able to yet, right? So to the person saying, when should I know if I should leave? Okay, if there's physical abuse, you, you leave, you leave. Now, I think there's a lot of people that will say, my husband's a narcissist or my husband's mentally or verbally or emotionally abusive, I would get help of a therapist to identify if that's true. Because sometimes I think people use those phrases as reasons why they want the guy next door, right? Like they're looking for an excuse to go create a new life that um, 
is going to be a hell of a lot harder than the life that they're inside if they just don't know it yet, right? But if there is abuse, um, if I think another huge thing for me would be worth considering ending a relationship, worth considering. Now, I'm being very careful about this because ending a relationship is a big deal. Um, if you, I was in a marriage and say maybe I was growing and I was want, and and we were having these major issues and I wanted to see a therapist and there was a nope nope not seeing a therapist not doing this and I gave it time and it was just m making it hell for everyone then I would see a therapist about okay is this a relationship that is toxic or I right but if two people are trying to the person asking if you're both trying if he's willing to try and he's not perfect try try because you're not going to find anything better. You think you are, but it's short-lived. Like Dave's and my relationship was not a forever relationship. We had two and a half years of extremely high highs and extremely low lows. And it was over before he passed, right? So it's, I, do you want to be on a roller coaster of relationships for the rest of your life? I'm not saying my life is bad. My life is great. And if I had a stable relationship, I would love that more than anything. Before we wrap the family relationship or the family slash relationship episode, I want to just ask you this one. This is personally for me to go hand in hand with this. There's two viewpoints on staying together for the kids. Yep. There's probably a lot mm. of people who feel trapped potentially. Yeah. Yes. And maybe the marriage is not good. Maybe he is abusive, yeah. but they have children and they're just going to suck it up until yeah. the children are out of the house. What do you say to people who are staying together for the kids? Okay. So now I'm going to introduce a different view viewpoint altogether. So maybe what you heard before was me giving my experience and projecting it into that question, yeah. right? Clearly. I'm also going to say this to what you're saying. If to... The reality is we are free spirits and we should be able to make whatever choice we want to make. Okay. There's a part of me that's like, oh, don't end a family because you're going to regret it. But that's because, you know, I don't love that I don't have a family dynamic that is cohesive and whole. Yeah. If there are two people in a marriage who are both miserable and do not want to make it work, actually, if there's one person in a marriage that doesn't want to make it work, <clears throat> the reality is that marriage is not going to work. It's not. And I also want to say this. If you are someone who is choosing to leave a marriage or wants to leave a marriage, let me just tell you, number one, your kids are going to be okay. I've now had two sets of kids who have been through two different divorces. Maddox and Marley have been through two divorces. They were through mine and Derek's. They went through mine and Chris's. They are awesome. They are better after the second divorce then they were in the middle of all of it. And a lot of it was because both marriages had toxic components, right? They We had great components. Then there were toxic things that the kids saw that were not good for those kids in that household, right? Uh, so us ending the marriage gave mom and dad the space to both find their own peace and happiness and the kids space to be in a peaceful home. So when... For example, Cash and Ruby are at Chris's house. He's peaceful with them and he's the best dad. He's so good with them. Then when they're at my house, they don't have to worry about the stress of whatever Chris and I were dealing with before. It's peaceful and it's loving and it's full and it's awesome. So if two people are saying, we don't want to be married, but we're staying together for the kids, first of all, I respect your decision if that's what you want to do. Uh, my personal opinion is I think your kids sometimes can be harmed more by the toxicity that they witness inside of a toxic marriage than they could be helped by the peace and healing of two individuals mm. taking their own path. Yeah, well said. There's, and the good thing is, Tyler, there's absolutely no wrong. Like we're all human and we all get to travel our own path. The only wrong way to do it is the way that you don't want to do it right? Like, like if you're dreading one path and you're doing it because someone else chooses it, not you, that to me is maybe the wrong way of doing it. The right way of doing it is doing what you feel you know is best in your heart. And then you're going to make 
every choice beyond that line up with right. You're going to be the best dad. You're going to be the best mom, whatever it is. You're going to make sure, I, I will say this, every relationship, you become a better partner. Literally, I'm on how many relationships, Dell? I am the best partner today that I've ever been, right? And sometimes I'm like, man, I wonder what this Heidi would have felt like for past partners because she didn't exist. It takes losing what you don't want to lose sometimes to be like, oh man, like I need to change. I need a wake up call. And so this next one is my opportunity to be better. But you can also do that in a relationship. I love that. Well, part one, episode one of the Ask Me Anything summer series is officially in the books. A wrap. That was good. Tyler, thank you for everything. Okay. And to everybody listening, thank you so much for being here. I love you guys. And I love the questions that you've asked. And I, I can't wait to do more of these. So we'll see you next time.